my dear friends. The disciples are in lockdown. The doors are barred for fear of what is outside those doors. And then Jesus comes to stand in their midst and he shares words of peace. And then were they glad when they saw the Lord. But one is missing. So later on, the disciples tell Thomas about what they've seen. And Thomas doubts. At least that's how our present culture tends to understand it. But is it really doubt? Or if it is doubt, what sort of doubt is it? Doubt has a very privileged position in our culture. Ever since Descartes tried to doubt everything, but then decided that he couldn't doubt that there was something or someone doing the doubting, it's been the foundation of how we understand knowledge. He was wrong in all sorts of ways. I'll talk about that another time. But it has meant that our culture has made a certain sort of doubt, we call it scepticism, into a badge of honour. You're not really an adult in your thinking unless you apply the necessary amount of scepticism. It's why notable atheists like Richard Dawkins often make reference to Thomas and the story of Thomas. They see it as someone who believes without evidence or the way in which uh, a culture, a religion might make a point or a virtue of believing without evidence. Dawkins is speaking from a very Cartesian understanding. Let's try for a moment to put ourselves into Thomas's shoes, or maybe his sandals. Thomas has heard a rumour. He's been told by people he knows well, people he loves, that Jesus has risen. Can we imagine what that might feel like? There might be some anger or jealousy here. How come Jesus appeared to them and not to me? What's wrong with me? Why didn't Jesus speak to me? I think there's something else going on. That doesn't seem quite right. I have a feeling that what's happened is that Thomas, in truth, is still in his own locked room, barred for fear of what is outside. And he's heard the rumour of safety, the rumour that he can come out. But he doesn't quite dare to believe that what his heart is most longing for might be true. So if it is a doubt that Thomas is feeling, it's not a doubt born of scepticism. It's a doubt born from a wholly understandable absence of courage. Thomas is afraid to believe. He's afraid because if he starts to believe it, if he starts to experience that hope and joy, and then it turns out not to be true, then the pain of losing Jesus for a second time will be all the more. And he thinks, he feels, he simply won't be able to cope with it. So for me, this is a story not so much about a doubting Thomas as about a longing Thomas. Thomas is in anguish. He's filled with contradiction between hope and despair. He's wrestling with this rumour of joy that feels like a torture. And then Jesus comes to him and he speaks words of peace to him. And Thomas says, my Lord. I've long identified with Thomas. After I was ordained as a priest, I celebrated communion for the first time in a special service, and on the cover of the Order of Service was a black and white copy of this famous Caravaggio painting, for it was on the feast day of St Thomas in the year 2000, and it felt so true to who I was. Once upon a time, I doubted, but now I believe. We've heard the rumour. We've been told by our friends, by people that we love, that Jesus is risen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. May Jesus enter into all of our locked rooms and bless us 
with his words of peace.